All right, so been working on these old monocoque wheels, monocoque. I don't know. I say monocoque, 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 cookie, monocoque. How would you say that? Monocoque. Yeah, monocoque. I don't know. Monocoque. Anyway. I've been working on these old wheels, came with the vet, and they're damaged pretty good. So, I figure, might as well show you guys how I fix these. I don't know if you can see that there, but it's low here. You look across here, it's high here. Let's see if I can get down here. So it's low there. And then I'll bring it around. Yeah, you can see it's sunk in. It's real high. Right here is really high. Beat all the hell. Just, you know, oof. it's rough. It's a rough old wheel. It's probably it's probably 30, 40 years old. Uh, and over the years, this one has been through some shit. High here, oh, high there. But the back side is in pretty good shape, as you can see here. That's runnable there. So that front side, though, is just whipped you can see when it's on the bench here you can see that it's got uh, yeah look at that that's a real high spot there it's got some pretty gnarly oh got another one there so as you can see it needs some help but i've gone ahead and scraped all the old wheel weight gunk off of it because it had been done about 50 times and no one ever took the old off of it. Now, cool thing about these old wheels, well, first of all, they're free. It's for the budget deal. So these wheels were free. They came with the car. Uh, the guy that I bought the car from gave me these wheels and said that they were the quote old center lines that came on the car. Uh, but I mean, I remember when I was loading them up, it was nighttime, but man, I was like, wow, these things are light. You know, as wide as they are, you would think, wow, those are going to be heavy, but they were really, really light. Like, compared to my GTO stuff, they were light. So I was like, whoa, that's kind of weird. But then I thought, ah, it's just because it's probably ain't got no bead locks on it. But, no. Turns out, the only, th I don't know much about monocoque wheels, but what I do know is that they were light everything i've ever heard about them is that they were super super light back in the day so and you know today's world you don't have many choices you know what i mean you run the same wheel as everybody else well that one's pretty snazzy nobody's got that wheel but you run the same wheel basically as everybody else you know what i mean get the same wheel on the same wheel on the same wheel on the same wheel so we want to be different that car is different and it was built 30 40 years ago here in oklahoma city and this is what it had these wheels on it. It, it that's what it looked like so you know i want it to look like that again and the main focus is that whenever someone the last guy obviously he didn't like the way the wheels looked but he also didn't he wanted to run the smaller tire and he wanted it to be pushed out to where to, to him he wanted it to look better but this was the wheel this was the wheel and tire that was on the back of it as a 2912 but as you can see it doesn't have but about seven inches of backspace maybe so that's a probably a 15 by 12 wheel 10 or 12 wheel 15 by 10 probably 
15 by 10 wheel with probably I'd say six or seven inches of backspace and and it sticks out so you can kind of see it you know it sticks out now right now it's up in the air so you know when it's on the ground it sits down but you guys know what it looks like but that's the look and I don't really like that look I don't like the black and polished look on this car I don't like the look of those front wheels on this car you know they may have their place on on other cars or other combinations but I don't know I just think that this car needs shiny wheels you know that's what I think it needs so and they need to be tucked up under there a little bit you know I don't like them sticking way out because then I can't lower the back down and the ladder bar has a terrible angle to it so oh oh nope oh, can't see that so this is what we're going to do this is a 15 by 14 wide we're going to put a 29.5 a true 10.5 29.5 10.5 tire on it and with this much backspace it should suck it up underneath the car further or we can lower the car down and get a better ladder bar angle and also uh, the wider tire will or the wider wheel will stretch the tire out and it'll help it help keep from wadding up so hard on the on the starting line when you let go of the brake you know it, it stiffens the sidewall pretty good and stretches it out there pretty wide uh, I don't recommend anyone else ever try to put a 10.5 tire on a 14 wide wheel especially without bead locks that's just stupid but do as I say not as I do so I'm gonna show you guys how I repair this first and then uh, then we'll give it a, a clean up and a polish and mount some tires on it and get it on the vet follow me okay now I realize that uh, you know not everybody's gonna have a tire balancing machine but this can be done without it I've done many many wheels on the ground or on the car you just bolt this on and use the axle to spin the wheel over and gauge where you're at I am going to do it this way because it's easier for you guys to see it will be much easier for you to see the damage can you see that damage <laughs> shit and that wheel is messed up ain't it good god almighty look at that believe it or not the other one was worse these are the tools you'll need torch map gas rubber mallet pair of cre a crescent wrench sorry and you know gloves uh, actually by rules of the shop this is a spinny thing and you're not supposed to wear gloves when you're working on spinny things in this case we're gonna wear gloves anyway because we're gonna get it really hot with that torch you're gonna want to mark the the bad places I usually mark the center try to mark the center try to mark the worst the worst spot of it try to mark where it starts so this one starts here and this is going to be an N and man I don't know where the worst part of it is here I guess here's going to be the worst part and then I'm going to say Don't stop till here. <laughs> if I had to bet. Good lord. The whole half of this deal is messed up bad. So we're gonna push on it here, we're gonna push on it here, we're gonna push on it here, here. And probably there. And then maybe right there. Alright. Okay, first thing that I did, I was going to say first thing that you should do, but no, I'm not going to say that. First thing that I did is I heated up the wheel. I took a map gas torch, 
to the edge of the wheel and I heat it up. You want to, or I wanted to get it about 150 degrees surface temperature basically and I wanted it to get hot all the way through. Since I'm going to be repairing the, most of the wheel is bent outward and only some of it is bent inward. I'm heating up the inside of the, of the bead, I guess you would say, or the lip. I'm heating up the inside corner so that when I push the lip out, it doesn't crack in the corner and pull the aluminum away from itself. Then you end up with a really, really bad, oh my God, look how wobbly that thing is. Holy crap. Wow. That is one f messed up wheel. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to mark where the bent spots are. What you can see me doing here is I'm using a big crescent wrench to pry on the marks where I've uh, said that it's the worst. So you spin the wheel, you mark where you think it's bent the worst, then you take a crescent wrench around and you pry on those spots. And if you did it correctly when you marked it and you said which way to pry and how much to pry, then you go around and you just keep prying. Oh, wow, look at that already. Wow, that's not bad, not bad. So just keep going. Now you start hitting all the spots in between the marks. So you have a mark and a mark, then you hit the spot in between it. Dang, look at that. Not bad. So just keep prying, keep bending, and don't worry about the surface because we're going to polish that anyway. So if it gets a little, man, that's not bad. Wow. Uh, I wish that you guys could see the other wheel. I did that one before this one. It was even worse. Oh, dude, that is runnable. I would run that. Oh, no, this guy's not going to run it. Nope, he's going to keep doing it. Uh, so after a while... The aluminum is, a, you know, it's great at heat dissipation. That's why we use it for cylinder heads and everything else. It starts to cool down, and you don't want it cool when you're pushing and pulling on it. If it cools down too much when you push or pull on it, it's just like a hanger or anything else. If you bend it so many times, it's going to break, it's going to crack, it's going to separate. Then you got to weld it back up, and when you weld it, I promise it pulls. It pulls, like, to the point where I don't know, you know, if I'd be able to get it very straight. So now you can see this guy is prying on it. Uh, it looks like very technically little prize. Man, that thing is done. Dude, he should, he's not going to stop. Nope, nope. This guy's a perfectionist. Run it, bro. Fucking run it. Come on. I've seen brand new wheels look worse than that. Run it, bro. This guy is, uh, yeah, he's, I don't know what he's seeing, but it looks fine to me. Send it, dog. Okay, well, either way, it's just torch and repeat, torch and repeat. Till, oh, wow, look at that. Look at that. Okay, now, once you get the uh, surfaces straight or the face of the wheel straight, then it's time to scuff. Since we don't have, <laughs> we don't have bead locks on these wheels, so these wheels are going to be held, uh, the tires are going to be held to the bead with screws. So when you're running a wheel and a slick on a car with any kind of horsepower or you know, trans brake, whatever, you really want to make sure and get the surfaces rough so that the bead has something to, to hold on to. Uh, yeah, the screw will keep it from spinning. You don't want it to pull on the screws. So uh, what I've got here is a 3M, I call the yellow finger. They make yellow, green, and white. Um, I think yellow is the most abrasive. And uh, I just got it on a little snap-on buffer. You're not sanding it really, you know, you're not putting a bunch of deep, deep scratches in it. You're just touching off the surface. Basically, if you know what a Scotch-Brite Rolock disc does, this doesn't even do that much. It barely just cleans the surface off. Go around, get the inside bead, the outside bead, and then that's it. Look, there's a repaired wheel. Done. That wheel is straight. It will hold air. I guarantee it. Okay, so I got the fronts here. You nasty. We got the back, got a little blue magic on the back ready to go. So I'm gonna hit it with the old mother's, I don't know what it's called, power ball or whatever the heck. Yeah, something like that. I hit it with the old mother's power ball on a drill and then. It'll be ready to go. Okay, it's time to get these wheels cleaned up. Uh, this is a very basic setup. It's a 
electric drill or a cordless drill with a mother's power ball or whatever they call it on the end. You can get it at any of your local automotive uh, places, automotive parts suppliers or whatever. But basically just a mother's power ball. And then I've got some blue magic aluminum polish or metal polish. Um, I've been using that stuff for years since I was a kid and it works great on just about everything. Using a little blue magic with a mother's power ball. The point here is just to make them shiny again. If I wanted to refinish them, I would start with an 80 grit or whatever, 150 grit, and then I'd work my way all the way up to 3000 grit just using WD-40 basically. And I would polish those wheels to a complete mirror deep finish. But that's not what I'm trying to do here. What I'm trying to do is these are race wheels going on a race car and they look terrible. I just put a lot of time into repairing the faces. I want it to look good on, and you know, it's a red car. It needs to have shiny wheels. It needs to have polished wheels. In my opinion, red cars don't need black wheels. Really, nothing needs black wheels, but whatever. So, hit it with a mother's power ball, blue magic. Do that for a little while. Try and, you know, go slow. Take your time. Have, have fun with it. And then you're going to polish it, buff it out with a microfiber here. And try and get all the excess polish compound off of the wheel. Um, the more you buff it, the better it'll look. All right, as you can see, got the fronts polished, repaired. We got the old small tires in there ready. <laughs> small tires, yeah, okay. And then here's the final product on the rear. I mean, you know, it came out okay. It's not super great. But we repaired the road rash as best I could. You know, there's still a couple little spots in it. But, I mean, as far as overall, it looks all right compared to what it did look like. And then uh, scuffed up. So all the mounting surface is real good. Bottom and top. So that the tire will have a nice clean wheel to grip. Since we're stretching a 29.5, Since we're stretching a small tire onto a 14 inch wide wheel. It's best to get them clean. I went ahead and did the fronts too. Got them all scuffed and cleaned. Uh, they turned out decent. I mean... You know, there's still some blemishes and some scratches, but as far as compared to what they used to look like, I'm extremely happy. So, we're going to try and mount this 29.10.5 on that 14 inch wide wheel and see what happens. Alright, so I have a wheel machine here. Get the tire, the wheel clamped into the wheel machine as it grips down real tight. And Hulk smashes the wheel into a million pieces. Uh, I use glass cleaner as um, bead lubricant. I don't know what you guys use, but, you know, works great for me. Uh, you want to get the tire on to the giant wheel. And then in order to get it seated, you basically have to squeeze the center of it until it does that right there. And honestly, in fast motion, that thing went easier than it did in uh, in real time. But to be honest, it wasn't hard. Like, I've had tires that were hard to stretch onto wheels before, like 275s on a 14-inch wheel. That's hard, but 29.5105 Hoosier on a 14-inch wide wheel, that thing lit up quick. Here I am cleaning with glass cleaner because I'm a weirdo, and I, I now I'm cleaning the tread of the tire. I really did that? Wow. Okay. This is me cleaning the tread of the tire before I roll it across the dirty shop floor. Wow. Did that say 97? All right. Well, it's time... Get these old ugly wheels off of here. I'm sure a lot of you guys are probably going to say, those are sweet, I love those, those are nice. But that's okay, different strokes for different folks. These are some sweet, lightweight aluminum lug nuts. Mm. But don't use the impact on them because they will not last. They don't mind the in and then the out, and, but the dugga duggas, no, I don't like the dugga duggas. All right. Ah. Oh. 
this? The new. Wait. Out with the new and in with the old. So that's a 2912 right there. So that's supposed to be bigger than a small tire. Oh, crusty drum brakes over there. Ooh, fancy, fancy, fancy. So, you tell me. 29.10.5 on the right. 29.12 on the left. That's weird. Isn't that weird? Look at that. Would you look at that? It's not even close. And I don't care what y'all haters say. That monocoque wheel or monocoque. Still haven't figured that out yet. I'm going to text Nate at Bogart and ask him how you say it, but... Okay, all y'all haters need to check yourselves right now because anybody who thinks that just looks like a cheap center line is crazy because even though it might look like a cheap center line, it still looks better than that, than that, whatever that is, that cheap weld wannabe or whatever, or cheap weld wheel. What kind of wheel is that? RC comp. Oh, shit. That's <laughs> RC comp. Never mind. Okay, it's a decent wheel. I just don't like the way it looked on my bet. Okay? Jeez. I got, actually got those wheels on my S10 and they look pretty good, so whatever. But not on the bed. So there you go. Look at that. That is a 29.10.5 versus a 29.12. Now, in the 29.12's defense, the 29.10.5 is on a 14-inch wide wheel. And I think the 29.12 is on a 12-inch wide wheel, or it may even be an 11 or 10. But, but still, it's not even close. Now... Here's the real kicker. Here's the real thing. I want y'all to see this, okay? I want y'all to see this right, y'all. I want you to see this right, y'all. So. <laughs> Look at that. That's a 28.10.5 on a 12 inch wide wheel next to a 29.5.10.5 on a 14 inch wide wheel. Like Dude, same. same. Hey, small tires, same. Dude, okay. While I will admit I like that Oklahoma and Texas has a big ass tire for a small tire, uh, you guys gonna have to admit that. Uh, Dude, that tire won't fit on your car, period. No, look at like, that. Like, you we'd would have, have to, to you'd have, not not just like tow, you'd have to like cut the whole back of the car out. <laughs> oh, shit, look at that. Oh, yeah, same, bro, small tire. Both of these are small tire. Remember when you was a kid and they did Sesame Street? Which like one of these is not like the other? Which tire, one of these just tire. don't belong? Oh, get a little sneak peek. Oh, snap! Direction. Direction. Oh, well. Shit. That's worthless now. Way to go, Chief. Uh, mark and center punch eight locations evenly spaced around the outer flange. One, two, three, four, five. Son of a. Uh, I think these were probably done before this kit even existed. Uh, drill the holes using a 1364. 
Leave enough room to the edge of the rim to accommodate the 3 8 socket, deburr the holes, then mount and inflate tires. Yeah, see, that's what I was going to say. When I do this, I put like 30 psi in the tires, especially if they're these tires. I put like 30, 35. It says to put 25, but on a big, big tire, I imagine 25 would be plenty. But you basically want as much, you know, you want a bunch of air in it so it pushes really hard against the bead. Because I've had them before with, you know, when I tried them the first time I ever did this, they had like 10, 12 pounds in them. And when you put the screw in, it just pushed the tire off the bead and let all the air out. So it doesn't work. So you want it to push against this lip really good. Uh, and then it says uh, use a 3 8 socket to install the screws through the rim and end of the tire bead inflate deflate tire to normal operating pressure. When installing the screws into the rim, just snug them up. Over tightening will result in snapping the head off the screw. I rarely do anything by hand here in this shop, so just letting you know. Uh, I don't plan on doing this by hand either. So this thing will torque them down to more than what you probably want. Uh, so we're just going to go till we hear the first couple of Ooga Doogas. Got it? I'll show you what I'm saying here. It's always scary because you want to get the perfect angle to where it's centered in the hole and it's going to hit the wheel just right. Perfect. And by couple of ooga doogas I meant like once it hits the rim face like once it hits the rim face completely and you feel it then a couple ooga doogas so if I had to guess I'm going to like probably 20 22 foot pounds which is probably way too much for this probably just want to be like 18 baby all right so you want to try and get it centered up in the hole where there's the same amount of space on all the way around the screw and also at the right angle to where it will go into the bead and pull it to the wheel so right there We are wheel screwed on the back side. Man, it's hot as fuck in here. You've seen me take those wheels from bent, wobbly, just warped, terrible, horrible, should have been thrown in the trash. And we made them something awesome that looks really good. Man, that don't look bad at all. We made them something awesome that looks really good on a vet or as the Corvette guys, the hipsters. By the way, I use this stuff on everything. Uh, as the hipsters would say, we reclaimed those wheels. Man, look at that. Show car stuff. I don't even know if a Corvette ever came with drum brakes. So, kind of kind of weird. So, this will be about it. Put this wheel on. Not bad. Not bad at all. Um, in the next video, you will see me attempt to make sure and set up make sure the car is straight make sure the chassis is straight ladder bars 
set them all up, align, square the rear end in the chassis, align everything, and then uh, set pinion angle, axle angle, drive line angle, all the fun stuff. And the very last thing we do is we're going to put it on the scales, set our corner weights, and lock down the ladder bars and take this thing to the racetrack. So, make sure you join us for that. Make sure you join us for that boring hour of me talking about silly chassis stuff and leverages and how to manipulate them to make your car go down any surface. If that's something that you're interested in, come back. That's weird. That stud's got all the threads missing off the end of it. Huh. Good to know. If that's something that interests you, swing back by, man. Check it out. Well, I think we did a pretty good job. Bye.